Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience. As you probably already know, I'm still here at Vicky's house recovering from my little jaunt down bodily stuff, having a cold, trying to get my voice back because on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'll be doing the musical for the last three times here on this tour. And I'm very excited for that. And then I begin my long journey driving back to Portland and then flying back to Mexico. Finally be able to rejoin our beautiful community there. I miss you all so much. And yet I wanted to talk, <coughs> excuse me, I wanted to talk a little bit about why we take one day that we hold in sacred silence. It's very simple. So that we give priority to that still quiet voice that we can only hear when we are still. The still quiet voice that we can only hear when we are still enough to hear it. We give priority to this just one day a week. And those of you who live wherever you live, you're always called to join us in that. Vicky and I today will be honoring holy silence and listening to that still quiet voice and receiving the perfect direction that it offers. And it's always perfect. That doesn't mean that it's not going to be challenging because it often is challenging. That still quiet voice challenges us to break through all of those self-imposed limitations, those blocks to the awareness of love so that we can finally remember and know and share who we are, that we are love, that we are the extension of a perfect holy creator. And because we are the extension of that, we remain as that now and forever. So once again, one day a week, we give priority to that still quiet voice by being still, by being quiet. So Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, even if it's for an hour, even if it's for a short time today, just set that time aside to be quiet and to listen to your voice. It's not the voice of someone out there or even a Holy Spirit that we perceive as different from or outside of us. It's the, the voice of you, the truth of who you are and have always been. That's what we listen to, not the made-up self, the small self that we've created to make our way through time and space, but that holy voice of reality, of love, of grace that's within us now, that reveals the joy, and this is where we come to our week's subject, the joy of, <coughs> excuse me, there we go, the joy <laughs> of even in the midst of going through bodily discomfort and illness, we can still feel, we can still radiate. I'm feeling radiant even in the midst of having a cold, not having my voice, but still the reality, the love within us radiates out in every direction if we would but allow. So before I do lose my voice, I do want to share something with you. So let me pull this up on the screen because I just wrote this, but I, I really felt it very strong. So I wanted to have it so you can all see it. So let me put this up on the screen and I'll, I'll share this and you can read along and then we'll talk about it. And then Vicki will take it from here. So claim what claims you. That's the subject. <coughs> Excuse me. The recognition that everything you do, no matter how it appears, is holy, is holy, leads to an experience of joy the world can never contain. I always like to read the first sentence twice because it really says it all. The, the recognition or you choosing to recognize that everything you do, no matter what it is, no matter how it appears, that everything you do is holy, that leads to an experience of joy that this world can never contain, 
can never understand your recognition that everything you do is holy. Wow, everything, no exceptions. Holiness is the simple recognition that you are and will forever be the extension of boundless love. The extension of boundless love. That's who you are. And because boundless love is unlimited, so are you unlimited in the extension of your own wholeness. You are unlimited in the extension of your wholeness, of who you are, who you've always been, the reality that is forever real, unlimited. So if you want to recognize this, become the source. Become the source that sees it everywhere, in everyone, and in doing so, you will realize that you are forever united with the creator who does this one thing perfectly and forever. You are united with the creator that does this one thing. That's all the creator does is extend itself, extend its love perfectly and forever. So this is all you need to know that your creator or the beloved or whatever you want to call it only does one thing. Perceive love through the recognition that only love is real. Once again, to perceive love through the recognition that only love is real. This is the sacred task that is before you now. <clears throat> Not no, but now. Claim it just as it forever claims you. So that recognition, this is the key. We must first recognize that I am one with that eternal extension of love, that this is my source. And then I become the source. I imitate that very source, which has sourced me. It really is the simplest thing in the whole universe to do. Not doing that has taken such great effort that we have literally concretized this egoic life that seems real to us. And we, um, we compete with each other. We fight with each other. We argue with each other, all the while forgetting that there is no other to compete with, to argue with, or to fight with. It's only the beloved or angels in disguise. And I can see that, recognize that at any moment, if I choose to recognize. And this is the power of, of having one day or even a short time set aside where we can listen to that which always listens to us, that which always holds us, that which has never forgotten the reality that is forever real within us. It's simple. All we have to do is to be still and listen and know that only love is real. And I am contained within that love. So we can make it complicated. We can string it out a long time. We can make it take lifetime after lifetime to try and get it right. But you can realize that you never had it wrong. You can realize that right now. You couldn't get this wrong if you tried. You can't, just because you dream that you did something in a dream, it has no effect on reality. It's that symbol. Dreaming that you do something that is wrong, is destructive. When you wake up, when you return to the heaven that you never left except in your imagination, you realize that it didn't have any effect. It didn't change the reality that is real. The truth that is forever true within you. And this is something to rejoice about. And we can rejoice right here, right now. Even if we still find ourselves locked in this dream or this illusion, whatever it may be, we can still rejoice. And this, perhaps, is the beginning of the, e the end of all dreams. The beginning of your whole entry into that heavenly experience of knowing that you are one with God, 
now and forever. So with that, I can feel my voice starting to give out. So before it gives out totally, I will turn it over to our dear sister, Vicki, and she and Calico will take it from here. Good morning, Vicki. Thanks, Brother James. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Happy Holy Wednesday. You know, I'm always excited. I love today. And I love that we do this together. Even if we only do this together when we're here together on the Zoom now. But in the joining of doing it together is great celebration that we have one purpose, one desire. So um, I love that post that you wrote. And what it brought me to right away was the gift we have when we have holy vision, holy seeing, innocent seeing, Christ vision, that's what Jesus calls it. But a holy seeing is nothing complicated, nothing to go work at. It's simply letting go of the things we have worked at and letting things be as they are without judging them. It's really that simple. It's letting go of any assessment, any better or worse than, or harder, I'll try harder, or I didn't do it well enough. It's, it's a child wonderment. And for me, it makes me think, you know, because I am around the kids these days, when I look at children, if I look at my, my granddaughter, or any child, you go to a school, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, and you see children play, you delight, I delight in watching them take on whatever roles they're doing, whatever they're doing, especially when they don't think anyone is watching them. I'll watch my little granddaughter, she's three, and she'll be talking away to her dolls and her little princess costumes and all her little things that she has. And I, there's no way I would say, oh, you're not playing this right. <laughs> you, should, you should have the two sisters talk to each other or you should do it this. There's just open-hearted delight in watching her. That's how we are to watch ourselves, how we can watch one another. If we watch one another with holy delight, knowing if we remember, it's in only our knowing that we already are the love of God, that we are the living Christ incarnate, right where we are, as we are. There's no work that needs to be done. Just like when we, like you said, if we wake up from a dream, we don't have to finish the episode that we were dreaming. We just waken, awaken from it. And that's all this is. Every day we come together to awaken from the dream of judgment. Oh, this is better. This is worse. I didn't do that right. I better change this. Those are all ideas that come from a little self, from a separated image that we've made up of ourselves. And there's nothing bad about it. And there's nothing good about it. It's just a nothing thing. It's just not so. And if we can learn and be willing, it's not even learn, just be willing to stop the automatic judgment. That's what ego is. The ego is a is a is like a, a a computer, whatever you call these things that you put in your computer program, that just operates on figuring, judging, measuring, counting, better than, worse than. And when we step back from all that, and that's what Holy Wednesday is. Stepping back from using our mind to assess, to letting our mind receive, to be open. What is silence? Silence is the sound of our beingness, of our soul, of spirit singing to us. And finally, it's saying, I want to sing with you. I want to listen. I want to receive. I want to be part of this chorus. Where am I anchored? That's that, Wednesday is a good day to look at that for all of us. Are we anchored in the world, in a job, in a place we live, in relationship to people and things? Or are we anchored in spirit, in the invisible realm, in the spirit of our own being that is a shared being? There's no exclusivity here. There's no exclusion because when we're anchored in spirit, we're in immediate communion and communication with the all. We belong and we are now in 
open in open communication to the all whether we think we are or we don't think we are remember that the feeling and the assessment of that is the ego program system it isn't the system of the soul of the spirit of love the system of love is open it's an openness to receive and in the receiving we naturally just extend and by doing that and coming into only that experience we, we can feel and we can know inside of us a present happiness that only comes from being anchored in spirit. When we're anchored in spirit, no matter what happens to us out here, nothing changes. We are, we are held in, in present love and in a present grace that is able to move through whatever seems to happen out here. And we witness that with many, many brothers and sisters who have gone through trauma, whether it's people from the Holocaust or people from Asheville, there are many who have been anchored in God, in spirit, in this oneness. Then when they were found, they found themselves in a trauma, the anchoring in the invisible world gave them safe passage. It's what opens the Red Sea for all of us, wherever we find ourselves. So when we anchor in spirit and we pay attention to it, we get to enjoy it. That's why I love Wednesday so much, because it's a day of finally getting to the party. It's a day of enjoying where I, I make sure I don't get distracted by extra phone calls or extra errands or extra, I'll do this, I'll clean the closet, I'll do that. No distractions. It's a day of total direction and dedication to I'm listening God love I'm here and I'm listening do you hear me do you see me <laughs> and feeling that yes they see me they hear me the birds come chirping around and the deer might walk by but I am joining I'm not trying to get anything or distract from anything the ego wants to distract from present happiness that love that's surrounding us so it wants to distract us or it wants to deny it. And when we affirm it and say, nope, whether I hear it or not, it's there and I'm paying attention and I'm listening, then I'm grounding myself. I'm anchoring myself in that spirit. And the fruit of that, it's inevitable. When we only do that and let go of all our judging and figuring and doings, Present happiness literally is a fountain that bubbles up in us, but no one can tell you about it, but everyone can experience it because it is when Jesus said, I leave you peace, I give you peace, peace that is not of this world. The peace I give you is everlasting peace. That's what Wednesday today is dedicated to, living in that peace and then letting that peace live through us. It gives of itself effortlessly without our trying to organize it or redirect it or come up with schemes for how to do this better or how to do that better. So holy vision, holy vision, see without judging anyone. I mean anyone, just love them for the Christ in being that we share and in our in the truth of who we are love everyone love all the all the political figures all of the all of the gang figures all of the people that we've categorized as terrorists don't see the actions don't hear the words of the outer script listen to the rhythm of the soul of the song listen for that and that outer script won't invade it will fall away through our seeing the holiness in one another. See that holiness. Be dedicated and anchored in holiness within ourselves and recognizing it within everything, not just in people and in everything. And then we find that we are living right now in a heaven that is appearing on earth as us. So thanks, everybody. Calico, it's all yours, honey. <laughs> Well, oh, James and Vicki, thank you so much. You know, I just get set up for my day with these sharings. Um, uh, 
you know, I woke up this morning and this doesn't happen. So it was very clearly not something I wanted to get involved with this morning. My As I woke up, I had threads, just tiny threads of thought that I should have done something differently. And I immediately, as Vicki would say, took to bed and went, nope, we're not getting out of this bed until we take this to Holy Spirit to see it differently. I will not allow those thoughts to enter. Everything I said and how I was was perfect. And James, you said it because we're holy and we keep forgetting that, you know, and then we want to correct ourselves and make ourselves different or whatever. So I just thank you for today. It was the perfect share for me to just, can I let go of any apparent wrongdoing? Because it can't be possible because I'm holy. And the other thing, Vicki, when you were talking about the kids, and this has happened before, you talk about children and I immediately go into kids. <laughs> yeah, let me think about kids a second. And because I really couldn't remember a really joyful time as a child. And as you were talking this morning, what popped in quite quickly and unexpectedly was, I think I was probably four or five. And it was one of those periods, I, I remember it, and I know my parents remembered it because they were just, they didn't know what to do with me. For about two weeks, I became a horse. I would wake up a horse and I would take my bath towel and shove it down my pants as my tail. And I would literally gallop around the day. And anyone that would ask me a question, I'd whinny. I'd whinny back at them. <laughs> I'd stomp my feet or whatever. Now, my mother was horrified. <laughs> Because <laughs> well, she was a different generation, you know, they didn't, you know, should we, should we take her into a hospital? What do we do with her? And the reality is, I remember it very clearly. I've never been so happy because I took on my day as a horse, which is no different than waking up from your dream state and going, I want to be holy today. Let's go for it. It's the same thing. And I and I just remember the joy that it brought me. I mean, I would gallop to school and I would sit, I think I was in kindergarten. I'd I'd, you know, be in kindergarten with this bath towel shoved down my pants. And people would ask me, and I would just <laughs> and it's like, and it brought me such joy to go back there. And I thought, okay, so I'm inviting all of you, whatever your happy, happy place is, shove a bath towel down your pants and go gallop into your day with joy. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Oh, man, I love that story. I, I am never going to see you in the same way, Calico. I'm going to always imagine that bath towel shoved down your pants. Wow. And maybe we could all try it or something like it. But the one thing that I got, you know, this is all about holiness. And Vicki, you said something about this. But when we are in the experience of this holiness, we have a choice. There's always a choice here between that little self, the, the, the self-created self, and our whole self. So the, that small self, the egoic self, wants to distract and deny our holiness, distract and deny, whereas our whole self wants to activate and allow, activate and allow. That's all we have to do is, this is an activation, coming together here in the morning activates us. That's why we do it at Namaste Village every day and invite the rest of you to come and join us because it activates us. It starts our day off with this energy and, and then we have to allow it to, to like, like a wave to take us through the day, just like Calico is allowing this image of being a horse to and take her through the day. We allow holiness to take us through the day. It's that simple. I love it. So we're gonna let, we're gonna let our dear uh, Scott take us back, take us out, take us wherever he wants to take us, but he'll take us to exactly where we need to be. So. Welcome, Scott. Just 
want to point out that Calico, at a very young age, you were already practicing a horse in miracles. <laughs> listen. That's what we're going to do today. So thank you, Scott. Thank you to Calico and Vicki. And a reminder that tomorrow, the amazing Matthew Fox will be with us, and he'll be sharing. So that'll be a great privilege to have Matthew come. If you don't know Matthew, he is just an incredible teacher. Uh, he was an, a Catholic priest, a, a Dominican for many years. He likes to remind me that he was a Dominican <laughs> Uh, about three or four years longer than even Thomas Aquinas until he was kicked out of the Catholic Church because of his radical beliefs that only love is real. And so we're going to hear from Matthew tomorrow, and we'll hear what he has to share with us. So until then, we say, Amen, 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 amen. amen. punto. punto. Love you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you.